we're gonna get rolling. We got people uh, waiting for us to waiting to hear from Senator Burton. So, um, hey, welcome everyone to our first, hopefully our only virtual meeting we ever have to hold. Um, appreciate it. This is Texas Patriots Tea Party. Although in a moment you're gonna see a logo which is not Texas Patriots Tea Party. So. Uh, we thank you for being here. We're going to get through the preliminaries quickly, not because we want to rush things in particular, but because uh, we want to be very mindful of our 40-minute limit. And uh, Senator Burton has been so gracious to get her presentation ready, and she's promised it's going to be the absolute best presentation ever. <laughs> so I don't remember do want... promising that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pop up a... Uh, a, share a screen here real quick and you'll still be able to hear me um, as we go through some uh, fun stuff and then uh, come on now my present my PowerPoint's not doing what I wanted to do here we go all right there we go you're gonna see that that's our meeting please join me as we start with prayer and then we'll get going with the rest of the meeting our father and our God we praise you for being so kind and merciful to our nation for so long and now we call upon you again to to show your mercy and your kindness and your grace to us as a nation as a state even here in locally in johnson county and in tarrant county and and surrounding we uh we look to you we rest upon you we trust you uh we ask that you would be kind to us once again that you would shed your grace upon us uh, we need it so desperately thank you for senator burton visiting with us tonight ask that you would help us uh, work with all the technology we we are grateful that that exists that we can have a meeting like this uh, we bring all this before you in christ's name amen amen and then uh we're going to do the pledge, even though uh, we're not going to be able to hear everybody, but we always open with the U.S. Pledge and the Texas Pledge, so you'll hear me. Um, if you want to stand at home, that's great. I'm going to stay seated, otherwise I'm going to be out of the shot, so that would look weird. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fantastic. And then my favorite, probably the only state that has its own pledge, love it, uh, the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. All right. We're going to move right along. Uh, real quickly, we promised we were going to show our, uh, our new logo and our new name, Lone Star. Patriots. Uh, our uh, motto is still the same, inspiring citizens to embrace our founders' charge to be self-governed. Uh, the Texas Patriots Tea Party was established back in July of 2010. I think you even saw Maggie Wright jump on onto the call here. She was one of the founders of the original Tea Party here, so, so welcome Maggie being here. Um, a couple of uh, logistics for you before we get to Senator Burton. Everyone came in with your, your microphone muted. Um, that's not because we don't want to hear from you, but because obviously, you know, hundreds of people get on and there can be a lot of noise, but you have control of that. You can self-govern and unmute yourself <laughs> if you have a question. Uh, Senator Burton is going to open it up for questions at the end of her presentation. Um, we'll see how that goes as we self-govern. If you wish to turn off your video because it may be slowing down for you, uh, the bandwidth, you can go ahead and control that as well. Um, we are recording this session, so we will post it on our Facebook site uh, shortly after we are done here, assuming all goes well. Um, there's a chat box also that you can, and I think uh, Ben, who's working with uh, Senator Burton, will be looking at that, and I will try and look at that. Um, all right, real quickly, we're going to get on to uh, Connie Burton. Uh, she's been a grassroots activist. That's kind of her roots, just like us, uh, right in the in the North Texas area. She's now the founder and CEO of The Texan, statewide news outlet, focused on stories that matter most to Texans. I hope you've you've seen some of those stories and, and paid that a visit. Uh, obviously, she was a grassroots activist. She worked on numerous campaigns for, for local, state, and federal races. She went on to run for office and was elected in 2014 to serve in Tarrant County Senate District 10 in Austin. She replaced Wendy Davis. 
if all of you remember that that far and Wendy Davis now running for Congress against Chip Roy. Um, and, and that's a race that's, that's going to be a tough race. Uh, and that's one that's a big one in the state. Um, her experience as an activist, elected official, and a taxpaying citizen provides a unique, unique and valuable experience and perspective on the political landscape in Texas, which is true. It, it's great to have somebody who's been an activist and then has uh, served in federal office, or sorry, in state office. <laughs> and has, yeah, didn't, didn't make it there and is, is now jumped into the business world, right? And top entrepreneur yep. and uh, she's finding out what that's like. Um, interestingly enough, Facebook shows you your memories, right? It shows when five years ago tonight, Connie was with the Texas Patriots Tea Party in Cleburne. Really? <laughs> I saw that pop really? So I saw that pop up on my uh, Facebook. And I thought, uh, apparently this is a tradition. And you've been with us a couple of other times since sure. then. But, but five years ago, you were sharing with us your first experience going oh. through a session. So wow. that, that's, that's pretty cool. So that's, I'm going that to is cool. Uh, turn this over to Senator Burton and her presentation, which means I stop sharing. And okay, and then we're going to see if I do this. We did a test run last night. Let's just make sure that I'm doing this correctly. <laughs> Thanks so much, Paul. I appreciate y'all um, allowing me to speak about uh, the media crisis we have going on right now. I'm certainly preaching to the choir, but um, you know, I, I do appreciate everybody coming on and, and listening tonight because I think it's um, a, a little bit more insight into it. Obviously, I've been traveling all over Texas um, for the last eight to 10 months, uh, giving talks about the media crisis that we have going on. And, um, you know, I'm just going to start off with what I have. Oops, oops, oops. Hang on. With my first um, slide here, I think it's very important. And I want you all to read along with me, if you will, please. Uh, this is a quote by William Fedora from The Rise of the Republic, and it is laws are controlled by politicians, politicians are controlled by voters, voters are controlled by public opinion, public opinion is controlled by the media and education, so whoever controls media and education controls the country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think this quote is spot on. Um, however, today I'm not going to be talking about the education aspect of that quote. Well, that'll be for another day. Uh, but I am going to talk about, obviously, who controls the media. And in doing that, I want to share a couple of studies that definitely drives this point home. So in this slide here, um, this is in, from 2018. The Media Research Center did a study and viewed 1,007 hours um, evening news stories about the Trump White House on ABC, CBS, and NBC from June 1st to September 30th. Now remember, even though you personally may watch cable ne news networks, the vast majority of the country gets their news from these three major networks. And according to this study, 92%, and that's all of the part in this pie chart that is read, 92% of the coverage of the Trump White House was negative. Only 8%, that little tiny slice of blue, um, was positive, were, were positive stories from these three networks regarding the Trump White House. And of course, that's easy to do when um, you control the topics that you cover and the way that you present those topics. Notably, the study um, revealed that the economy and tax and regulation cuts, which were all good uh, news topic stories at the time, um, were not covered by these three networks. Also revealing is this pie chart here. Um, the Center for Public Integrity released an analysis during the 2016 election, so clearly this is before Trump was, was in office, that showed that more than 96%, which is now the part in blue, of journalists' political donations went to Hillary Clinton's campaign, while only 4%, the little tiny slice of red there, uh, of journalists' political donations went to Donald Trump. <laughs> so, I mean, just those two statistics alone um, clearly point out that the media is controlled by those who are politically left of center. And again, this isn't anything that we don't know, but it's it's good to see it actually um, in in this you know on, from a study um, reveal this knowledge as well. 
All right, so um, that's just a you know quick look at the national uh, landscape. Unfortunately, and I think many of you know as well, Texas media is no different, and we saw no greater proof of that than during that this past 2018 midterm election, when an obscure congressman from El Paso decided he wanted to run against ten Senator Ted Cruz. Certainly, he was no one that anyone knew, uh, and and yet he became the uh, darling of the Texas media. Um, you know, I don't want to take anything away from his campaign and his $80 million that he dropped on Texas. That was ultimately why it became such a close race. But I venture to say that he could not have raised um, those dollars that he did without the nonstop coverage by the media here in Texas. And that's what enabled him to raise the money that he did that enabled him to have the race that he did against Senator Cruz. Um, also notice the Dallas Morning News headline here. Oh, I'll go back. Sorry. The Dallas, uh, yeah, the Dallas Morning News. Sorry. I was thinking I was going on to the Houston Chronicle. The Dallas Morning News uh, headline here regarding Beto during the election cycle. Now, remember, this is a I'm running for U.S. and it's the article skateboarding. This is just one of many. Uh, the Dallas Morning News ran skateboarding. Beto O'Rourke shreds Whataburger parking lot. Um, we didn't include the photo they used for this hard hitting news story on Beto, but trust me, it was a big, beautiful picture of him skateboarding. So, you know, these are the kinds of, as I mentioned, hard hitting types of articles um, that they ran uh, regarding Beto O'Rourke. And of course, we had all the Texas newspapers endorse Beto over Senator Cruz, as they did Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump. Uh, no surprise there. It just, it just astonishes me um, how, how blatant these media outlets are with their bias and yet they claim that they are not biased, right? So they continue to say that they're not biased and yet, you know, they endorse these candidates. They um, constantly write these puff pieces about um, this democratic uh, candidates. Okay, so um, that's just kind of a quick look at the local newspapers throughout Texas. And trust me, we have, you know, lots more that we could show you, but that's just a, a little bit of a glimpse. Uh, but there is one statewide outlet that covers Texas political news, and that is the Texas Tribune, and they are based in Austin, Texas. Probably most of you watching are familiar with them, but you may not be, and if you're not, that's great. <laughs> I prefer that. Um, they certainly present themselves to be unbiased as well, and, uh, but however, don't be fooled by that. Their coverage is decidedly left of center. These are just some old headlines we could pull many, many. Um, what, what, with these particular headlines, what I, I like to get across is what we witness with these outlets who claim that they don't have any bias is they, they take the talking points and rhetoric the left of center espouses and they normalize it by the type of content they write and the headlines they use. For example, in these two headlines from the Texas Tribune, which is this first one, most members of the Texas legislature are white men and so are the committee chairs. Uh, the second one, this school district has been at risk of state takeover for years. Some blame white plight. Um, identity politics is a huge part of the Texas Tribune's narrative. And frankly, I don't even think they realize it. Um, it's so blatant uh, to those of us on the right, however. And, you know, uh, identity politics is what the left is about. And so what happens with these media outlets is it just becomes the normal talking points for them as well. Um, this last uh, headline here says, photos show almost 400 migrants packed in cages at Texas Processing Center. So um, let me tell y'all, <laughs> the Texas Tribune had absolutely ad nauseum coverage of the border when there were so-called kids in cages during the Trump administration. But during the Obama administration, when the very same actions were taken, nothing. So don't let the Tribune or anyone else try to convince you that they are an unbiased news source for political news because it's just not true. Now, here's another pie chart for you guys to look at. 
just if we just take a quick look at these um, state level legacy media outlets who they endorse the type of stories they cover uh, along with the verbiage they use there is no doubt regarding their bias but if you look at this pie chart here um, even if we only uh, look at the Cruz Beto election, which was a statewide race, which was the highest statewide race that we had in 2018. And while the result was obviously razor thin, uh, the chi this chi excuse me, this pie chart <laughs> demonstrates that roughly half of Texas is still right of center. I'd venture to say that more than right, half is right of center because. Unfortunately, there's lots of people out there who do not vote in elections. Um, but if, again, if we just look at this uh, election, we can safely say that half, at least half of Texas is right of center. And yet we have legacy media outlets all over Texas who are catering to the liberal biases and using liberal narratives. Those of us who are right of center do not have an alternative and are frustrated with our media sources. And my gosh, we have been for so many years now. Um, and this leaves a huge void for at least half of the voting population here in Texas. And it leaves us looking for, and frankly yearning for, news we can trust and who doesn't push liberal to launch the Texan. We, did, we took the bull by the horns and said, we've got to do this. Um, we, we've got to get into this market. We've got to do something about this media that continues to, um, you know, uh, use the less talking points um, in all of their uh, uh, content that they put out. And so we launched the Texan and give you a little idea of who the Texan is. Uh, it was put together in 2019. We're already over a year old, which is unbelievable. Um, and we put together an awesome team um, to fill this void. Um, Texan is right of center. And, and, and all of us, excuse me, I, sh I should say, all of us at the Texan, forgive me, at the Texan are right of center. Um, we have experiences in politics, policy, and or journalism. These are not people out of journalism school. They're first and foremost right of center uh, people who have uh, experience in politics and have journalism skills, which makes a huge difference um, in our uh, in our. Uh, in, in our entity. So, um, so these people understand the issues and the topics uh, that are important to right of center Texans, as obviously I do, uh, that many times don't even get covered by the mainstream legacy media out here, outlets here in our state. So we our office is actually in Austin. It's just a quarter of a mile from the Capitol. We knew it was important to be in the belly of the beast. So our reporters are on the ground during committee hearings and press conferences that are happening at the Capitol. Now, the Texan is an online only news source. Um, we, we, are, we put out original quality political news that is straight reporting but told from a right of center perspective. And what I mean by that is the types of stories that we cover and the language we use and don't use in our reporting. For instance, we don't refer to abortion as reproductive health care in our articles, which is how abortion is depicted in all other media outlets today. Um, the goal of the Texan is to fill the void for half of Texans who are frustrated with all the narratives and all the push, excuse me, all the spin uh, that the media do here in our state. We seek to embody the Texas spirit in our reporting, and we aim to counter the liberal bias that is so pervasive in media today. However, now, we are only strict, we are strictly Texas focused. So federal, state, and as local as we can get. But we're, we are focused on Texas issues, Texas candidates, Texas uh, elected officials. Um, you know, we're not gonna be reporting on the latest uh, AOC tweet or even the latest Trump tweet. That's not what we're about. We are about presenting the news so you can make informed decisions for Texas. Um, and as I mentioned, again, we are, uh, everybody that works at the Texan is right of center, uh, and we don't deny that. However, 
unlike other media outlets, we do not exist to push a narrative. In fact, as we, my bullet points here, we are not, we do not publish political opinion. We do not and will not endorse in races. We do not and will not have editorial editorials or editorial boards, I should say. We, we're not going to have editorial boards that publish editorials that try to make you think one way or the other. Uh, I tell you, the editorials are what makes me the craziest about from all these other media outlets, frankly. Um, we just exist to present the facts so you can make informed decisions for Texas. We report on stories that are important to you and your pocketbook and values and stories that are important to Texans. We, we actually do what media is supposed to do. So um, here's a good um, picture of, or slide I should say, of our uh, website here. This is from quite a while back, frankly, because we don't even have all of our new tabs up on there. Um, our URL for the Texan is the Texan.news the texan.news. And when you put that URL into your browser, you'll see our clean, user-friendly website with an emphasis on our photography, as you see here, and factual headlines. Um, there are no clickbait headlines that only serve you to serve to fool you into reading an article that once opened has nothing to do with the headline at all. We've all fallen for it. It's called clickbait headlines, and that's what a lot of outlets do. Um, and ours are just simply um, factual um, reporting, or uh, factual headlines of the stories that we report on. If you will, on this particular slide, take a look up here in the kind of right top right hand where the little red subscribe button is. Uh, just notice that right now, because I'm going to talk to you about that here in a little bit. Um, we, uh, in addition to all our fabulous articles that we publish daily um, with news that matters, we've also added features along the way in this year that we've been um, active and published. Um, we've, we have launched The Roundup, which is a weekly news podcast uh, that gives you a behind the scenes look into the most important stories in Texas by the reporters that cover them. So every Friday morning, this podcast comes out and it's our editor and whichever uh, writers have written stories that week and they kind of go in depth into the stories that they've written. It's pretty cool. A lot of people like podcasts um, and you can find our podcast on all of those platforms if you're a podcast listener. We've also added Voices of Texas. That's actually on our website. It's exclusive video interviews with people who influence policies and politics here in Texas. We also have a feature called the back mic. Now that's an article, but it comes out weekly, um, only on Friday mornings. And it's an insider's look into Texas legislature and state uh, campaigns and politics. And then we also featured um, beginning, I guess the beginning of this year, um, the war room. And that is a awesome feature that's also on on our website and it's on our tabs at the top um, when you put in the texan.news it's an unparalleled un, uh, comprehensive look into the most important campaigns of the 2020 elections so you can go to the war room click on it and um, you can go to a particular campaign and look at you know how much that uh, candidate has raised the articles that we've written about them you know the the um, endorsements that they've gotten, that kind of thing. A lot of people were using that, particularly before all the coronavirus stuff happened, um, and they were sharing that and helping to know, you know, what candidates were, how they were doing on the campaign trail. Okay, so even though we've existed only for a little over a year, our reporting has already been featured in these publications. Um, Politico, Fox News, New York Post, The Daily Wire, The Blaze, Daily Caller. We also have um, Mark Davis, which is a radio host in the Dallas area. He uses our articles and, and speaks about us um, quite often. And then Chris, the Chris Salcedo Show, which is another radio host, his um, program is in Houston and sometimes Dallas, and he uh, uses our articles and um, talking, not talking points, our articles for his show's talking points. Um, and honestly, we've been featured in these um, national publications um, just because there's finally an outlet that has um, state-level news that is 
um, from the right of center perspective. But again, when I say right of center perspective, I'm not talking about um, you know, bomb throwing. Uh, we're not an advocacy organization. We're just reporting the news, but we're reporting news that is important to right of center Texans. And that's why we have so many of these art articles shared in these publications. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh oh. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. I couldn't get it to to uh, move forward. All right, so I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about um, how and how our stories are different. And, you know, those of you who have um, already subscribed, probably familiar with this story. And those who didn't haven't subscribed are also familiar with this story because it was a very big story. Um, uh, you've heard about, likely heard about James Younger, but if not, I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, those of us on the right were very aware of a very sad story coming out of Dallas County where a mom and a dad of two seven-year-old twin boys were divorced. Uh, the mom had custody of the boys. However, she was also socially transit transgendering one of the twin boys, um, James Younger. And what socially transitioning means is dressing James as a girl when he goes to school and when he went to church and also calling him by the girl's name, uh, Luna. The father was very concerned because he didn't want the next step to happen, which is medical transitioning. Me excuse me. He didn't have medical decision making to prevent the next step, which was, um, medical transitioning. And so this led them to court. Okay. So we were watching the story, you know, we saw it happening and we knew this was, you know, significant because it has potential societal and obviously legislative implications. And we are a political news organization. Um, so because of that, the Texan had a reporter in the courtroom every day of the trial, and he reported factually and in detail of the story. And um, if you'll notice here, these articles, there's a couple of our um, headlines of these articles. There's no opinion, no rhetoric, just straight reporting. Uh, it, it, also within the articles themselves, but you can tell here, you know, one headline, hearing and custody battle over alleged transgender seven-year-old will resume next week. He gave the details within that article. Lots of people were very, very, were watching this. We're very thankful that we were writing on it. Um, and, and they were especially thankful because, by the way, there were no other legacy media outlets in the courtroom at all. The Texan was the only one, um, a straight news reporting organization in the in the courtroom. The only other one that was there was um, LifeSite News, which is a national advocacy organization, which we love. They are, uh, they, you know, they're a life organization on the national level. And so they were there as well, but they, they report differently because they are an advocacy organization. Um, but we were the only ones there in the courtroom the whole time. So all, uh, although the judge was going to make a ruling in this case, she asked the jury previous to her ruling to go back and deliberate whether they believe the sons should be with the mother or, or, the, or the father or both parents. And after deliberating, they came back with their decision that both boys should be with their mother, the one that wanted to transition the one child. Um, and be and because of that verdict, and because now, again, this was only um, the, the uh, jury coming and giving this judge a jur the verdict, He's, the, the judge is actually still going to, it's a she actually, is still going to make a final verdict. But I, I don't really understand why she did it this way. Maybe this is a common thing, but um, she did want them to, to come back with what they felt like the verdict should be. I guess is how I should state it. And because that jury came back with that verdict, and because the Texan and LifeSite News were reporting on this on the case, it absolutely blew up on Twitter with the hashtag, and many of y'all probably know this, Protect James Younger. Um, Donald Trump Jr., Senator Cruz, Matt Walsh, who is a conservative pundit personality, are just a few who uh, championed this online. Um, and it picked up national attention, and, and it, that's when it forced major news outlets, both in Texas um, 
and in the US to report on it, but nobody was reporting on it before that. It, it took this hashtag to get them to report on it. Um, now, because we were there and because we reported the facts of the case, our articles were linked in the Daily Wire, Fox News, New York Post, and the Daily Caller. But what's absolutely amazing is the judge then came back the following week in the courtroom and ruled for joint medical decision making for both parents. In other words, the mother could not just move forward with more transition, trans, transitioning, transgendering of her son without the father's okay. Previous to that, she could just do whatever she wanted. So that was pretty phenomenal. And while, you know, I never really advocate for, um, you know, um, verdicts to be made in this way, um, thank goodness that we were there reporting on this because I don't think anybody, I don't know that this story would have gotten any attention whatsoever had we not at least been reporting during um, the trial. So, uh, and just to give you an idea, um, uh, once again, you know, the Dallas Morning News was only there for the last day of the of the judge's verdict. And so then they came out with an article, but you'll notice their headline is Dallas child custody battle hinges on seven year olds. Gender identity draws attention of Abbott and Cruz. And then the Texas Tribune Dallas child custody battle hinges on seven year olds. Gender identity draws attention of Abbott and Cruz. Um, what we're notice, what we notice is they don't really uh, these media left of center media outlets pounce, for instance. Um, they tell the story from the perspective of, you know, uh, Republicans, you know, getting in on something, not about the story itself. And that's what we were so proud of. We got the, the actual story out there of what this mother was wanting to do with her seven year old boy. The one that's really horrifying is this last one. It was Forbes. Um, it says, Texas is afraid of a seven-year-old transgender girl. That's what they called uh, little James Younger in their headline, which I think is just absolutely horrifying. All right, just one more example. Um, County Sheriff Bill Wayborn, who is Republican, uh, went to DC for a round table discussion on illegal aliens and how this issue was affecting Tarrant County. And after the round table, he spoke briefly at a press briefing at the White House discussing the issue. Within minutes, social media was blowing up with tweets from media outlets all over Texas. And this is what they were saying. Here's the Texas Tribune one. Uh, they were the first out with a story. They had a whole story and a tweet that stated, Texas sheriff says migrants are drunks who will run over your children during White House briefing. That's their tweet. And immediately, uh, the Houston Chronicle and KBUE both had almost identical headlines. Houston Chronicle, Texas Sheriff speaking at White House, calls migrants in his jail drunks who will run over your children. Same thing from KBUE. Obviously, our editor at the Texan had uh, one of our reporters first watch the, the briefing and listen to the audio. And our reporter found that his quote was, of course, taken completely out of context. And so our reporter immediately went to Sheriff Weborn for a comment, which is, you know, what everybody should have done, right? Um, but we were the first to reach out to him and get a comment. And she, you know, of course, um, you know, was able to get what he was saying, why he was saying it, put it into perspective. And, um, you know, we were able to write an article that, again, just stated the facts. Um, and I will tell you, the Texas Tribune must have realized how egregious their article and tweet was because they literally took it down. The article and the tweet they took down, but by then the damage had been done. I mean, they already had national um, outlets covering it, writing the same thing. You know, it's just the same. It's the same thing that we see constantly um, these days, you know, with all the news. It just goes from one place to another. It doesn't matter what the facts are, frankly. Um, so, you know, we're little, we're small, we can't compete with national organizations, but at least we had something that people in Tarrant County could post on their Facebook page, you know, to show that there is a different side to this, not even a different side to this. It was just, this is the truth. This is the facts right here. Now, right? Um, and so um, we were happy to be able to at least share the facts of that story. Oops, go back. So, 
you know, obviously we now have, we're over a year old again, as I mentioned, and we have a whole year's worth of fantastic stories like these. Um, and I can't talk about them all here. Um, I just mainly want to show you how the media perpetuates left of center talking points and spins the news in a way that is frustrating and downright dishonest at times. And that's exactly why we launched the Texan to fight this liberal bias and rhetoric. Oops. Oops, I got some, some background noise. Um, Sorry, I, I didn't know if that was Paul talking to me. So I hope you're ready to end the left's monopoly on news media here in Texas. And if so, there's a couple of things that you can do for us. Um, first and foremost, you can like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And share our articles on all your social media sites, please. Uh, and then I hope that you will subscribe. And let me talk to you a little bit about that. I mentioned to you that red button clear. Um, we are a subscription-based news site because we don't want advertisers funding us, nor do we want big money backers funding us. We don't want to be pulled in a direction that doesn't fit the concerns and interests of our readers. That's who our focus is, is our readers, just to give them the facts so they can be educated and informed on politics here in Texas. And so, you know, my husband and I put down our own money just as everybody does when they open up their own business um, and say, you know, we're committed to this. We are into this basket, but obviously we can't do that forever. And, and that's why we, we developed this kind of business plan. We, want, we wanted uh, to sell subscriptions so that the readers are who hold us accountable and who are we are accountable to. Um, and so, you know, if you uh, like what you see, if you're tired of the liberal bias, I hope that you will go to the red subscribe button. And then when you do, you're going to see two boxes pop up. And this is this first slide. Um, you, uh, let's see, you can either subscribe monthly, which is $9 per month, and you can cancel, of course, at any time, uh, and that's just going monthly, um, or you can subscribe for a full year at $90, uh, at $90, which is a little bit less than, it's about $7.50 a month, and don't do it yet, in case you are, because I have something to offer you here at the end, but also when you click that subscribe button, in addition to this premium box, you're also going to see this freak you out. Um, I'm going to explain that to you. If you want to go, it's the only reason that that's there is we actually got people <laughs> that came up to me and said, we believe in what you're doing. We want to help you. Um, you know, um, what can we do? And we said, well, we'll figure out something. And, and we did. Um, so those who want to go above and beyond to help the Texan grow faster and have a wider reach, you can actually become a Patriot member. Um, it doesn't get you anything more in regard to our content than a premium member does, but it does help us with our bottom line. It's something I hope at least somebody will consider. Um, when I'm talking to groups across Texas, I always make sure to, to thank everyone uh, for taking the time to come by, um, you know, to listen. It's no different here on this uh, webinar. So um, normally what we do is we have two different promotions running. Normally we have a, you know, you can subscribe for a year and get a month off, or you can subscribe for a year and get this awesome fake news stops here mug that we have. Everybody loves this. Um, but when I go and speak to groups or when I do, when I speak to, on a web, webinar like this, what we do is we combine the two. It's kind of a special offer to people who invite me to come and speak and allow me to uh, take up some of your time. So um, I think you're right. It should be in your, uh, in the, what do we call that? Uh, the <laughs> the script. Chat. Thank you, Ben. Um, it should be uh, in your chat now. There's a link. If you'd like to, if you click on that, that gives you the opportunity to subscribe for a year. Only if you subscribe for a year do you get this, you get the two in one, you get a uh, one month free and you get the, the mug that comes directly to your house. So anyway, um, that's, you know, basically what, who the Texan is, why we're doing what we're doing. And, you know, I just, I want to continue um, 
this fight for Texas. And I think it's so important that we also take the fight to media and their fake news. And again, it's not by lobbying, uh, you know, bombs or anything like that. It's just presenting the news so people can make their own decisions. So now I'm open for questions, Paul. Great. So first of all, there's bad news and good news. The bad news is we went long, but the good oh, news is sorry. Zoom popped up a gift to us to go long. So we can take questions. Awesome. Awesome. Terrific. Sorry about that. I always, sometimes I talk slower, sometimes I talk faster. So <laughs> you, were, you were going fast and you had a lot to cover, but it's, it's all good. So okay. everyone out there, you have control of your own microphone. It's, it's kind of the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. If you open up the controls, there's a little microphone and you can ask your question right there. Oh, look, there's old Maggie Wright. Not, not old. O, O, L, <laughs> as an <in> old friend. <laughs> I'll start off with a question. Nobody's popped up yet. Um, it's difficult to remove ourselves from our bias. It's really difficult. So even if you're trying to practice journalism, yep. how do you prepare a story? You've got your reporters out there preparing a story. Do you sit down as a team and and try and help hey you know we've got to be really careful how we state something here right and and you know something that i need to make clear too is i am the 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 ceo owner i have i have no well i can't say no part of the content because i suggest stories too but i have an editor and there the editor then uh you know is the one who adds the story, make sure that they are, you know, we get a quote from, you know, these people, do we get a quote from these people? Are we, you know, uh, making sure that this covers all sides of the story? Um, you know, what I say to a lot of people is, you know, we all, we all have opinions, right? And, and it's fun we, as a team together too, we certainly all hear our opinions, but once it goes down on the paper, it is just the facts. Um, and, and, you know, again, like I said, you know, we admit that we're right of center. So the type of language that we use is going to be right of center language, like, you know, again, abortion versus, you know, uh, uh, reproductive health care, um, you know, that kind of thing. We use illegal alien because that is the term that law enforcement uses. I don't know if you all noticed this, but all the left of center media now uses the word migrant for anybody whether they are going through the system or they are here illegally. So, you know, again, you know, we, there are terms that are different, but um, the editor is the one who makes sure that these stories that are going out are um, factually correct, um, are not, you know, using language that is emotional, right? You know, uh, uh, or personal, right? It doesn't come from a personal perspective. So um, they're much more talented than I, Ever be in that regard because you all know me I'm very opinionated right? <laughs> so I have no uh, I don't do any of the editorial uh, editorializing of the content at all okay great come on anyone else we got we got a lot of folks on who are watching so unmute yourself and ask a question <laughs> Maybe I answered them all. Come on. Especially in the, the crazy news cycles we're going through right now. You've got to have a question. That's another thing I'll talk while, while people want, if they want to consider, you know, this is all kind of older stories. Um, we, I mean, my gosh, we've just overwhelmed. I honestly worried about what kind of stories we were going to be writing in between sessions. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's just they're coming at you so fast you can hardly keep up. Um, but particularly uh, with the coronavirus, um, we're, we're talking about stories with a, that have government overreach. Again, we're not saying, you know, uh, these local officials shouldn't do this. That's not how we're reporting it. We are just reporting what they're doing. You can make the decision now. Me, you know, as somebody that is right of center conservative, when I read that, I'm like, you know, this is government overreach. They shouldn't be doing this, right? But you're not going to even see those kinds of stories 
in the leptocenter media. You know, they're talking fear and, you know, uh, only giving you parts of numbers and not the whole story, particularly on coronavirus. When we're, when we're reporting on coronavirus, it's, it's, you know, with the facts and not fear and, you know, um, clicks and, you know, clickbait and that kind of a thing. So we have a lot of stories regarding uh, not only the coronavirus, but government overreach, the cost of, you know, just the PPE, you know, and the cost of that, you know, the, a lot of times these left to center media outlets don't really care about the taxpayer end of it, right? And we do, that's something that's important to us. And so that's what I mean then by the types of stories that we cover that others don't. I have a question. Hi there, girlfriend. Hi, Connie, I love you. Love you. Um, um, so many of the things I post on our website, on our Burleson Women Republican Women's site, Google just deletes, <gasps> deletes, deletes. I can't hardly get anything on there. And I've put some of your Texan posts on there and they're always deleted. Really? Any suggestions? No, and frankly, I hadn't heard that about ours yet. And you know, I was on Twitter this afternoon and they were really, I guess, I don't know, they did again to, I guess, President Trump today on one of his tweets and somebody else's and, and it's getting, I guess, really, really, really bad. Um, the, uh, you know, just outright, what is that, you know, censorship. Again. Censorship. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't, you know, let me, I'll talk to my, you know, uh, marketing guy and see if he's heard of, you know, anything like that happening. Uh, and I'll let you know. Um, okay. I don't have any insights for you on that. I did not know that that was happening particularly to us. I do know we talked just recently about, uh, ben, are you there? Yes. Can you talk about my ear? Was it that? The, what was was it that uh, at, what was it that we got censored on or something? Well, we have um, been having some issues with um, a particular Facebook advertisements lately. They'll that's it. Facebook ads. Name. Yeah, they'll yeah. be labeled as like misleading information, and then we'll have to send it back to the process. We've had yeah. that happen. Okay. So, <laughs> did you hear that? It's Brenda? just articles. It's just it, articles. Anything yeah. about the Republican Party or anything that right leaning? I, I have something. I hardly have anything on my page anymore that they don't block. I don't know if I'm targeted or like what, what platform is this? It's the Burleson area Republican women Facebook on, page. Yeah. On Facebook. Okay. I don't know. Have you heard that Ben? Have you heard anybody else saying anything to us? I haven't about heard that? about that. I, you know, I, I'll show you a few. I've, okay. I've clipped on page, copied it or I made a picture of it. Okay. I'll, so, um, I'll message you my email and you can um, send me some examples and I'll be happy to look at it. Okay. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Fanny. What, what's interesting about that particular topic is, um, and I was down with uh, Dan Crenshaw in Houston on uh, Saturday and Lieutenant Governor Patrick and and Kevin Brady, but and they were discussing some of this. Um, were and they? One of, they, they? Yeah, they discussed this a bit during their their panel because uh, Alex Marlowe from Breitbart was there moderating the panel and obviously concerned about this. And one of the things that I, I believe it was uh, Dan Crenshaw mentioned was he said, you know, the First Amendment was there was put in with the idea that we were going to have to restrain government. We don't know if the founding fathers actually thought ahead that we would, might need to use it for actual citizens in, you know, infringing on the rights of other citizens. I don't know if they actually envisioned that, that we end up there. And right. that's kind of where we are. It is where we are. And, you know, um, you know, those of us now I'll take off my, the Texan hat and just be me with y'all and know that right we've been frustrated by the left for many many years because even though supposedly they say that they are the party of inclusion and you know yada yada actually what they work hard you know hard at is to silence us altogether 
right? It's, it's not a party of inclusion. It's a party of come and join us only if you have our perspective and you think like us. And by the way, we don't want any other opinion out there, right? <laughs> and so, um, you know, we've been dealing with that for a long time now, frankly. Uh, it's just become so bad that now it's on these uh, social media platforms as well because they're pressuring these uh, companies and, and, you know, social media platforms. Well, and they're all, I think, they're all left of center people too, right? That run them. Right. So, yeah. Oh, hi, guys. hi, how are y'all? Good. Bob Mize here. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to ask you about the same type issue there. When I post something to Facebook and then, uh, I hate to say it, but my niece and my sister-in-law do comments and stuff. And then all of a sudden I get something from Facebook saying, you know, it's deleted or whatever, you know, or censored or whatever. Mm. How do I get around it? Repost it again? <laughs> yeah, I would say, of course, I've seen people say then that when they do that, then they get, what do they, Facebook jail, <laughs> yeah. right? Then they can't post at all. So I don't know if that's really great advice. You know, I, got a, I got a message that told me if I posted again, that that uh, happened. And see, you know, an, another thing I find funny is, you know, Facebook's fact checkers. Yeah. These people must be saints because they know <laughs> the absolute 100% truth about every single, they have zero bias in the game. They're just exactly. there as a 100% fact checker and they're definitely not left leaning at all. At all right. All. But <laughs> that's one thing I've always found so frustrating is, you know, Facebook's way of, muting what they don't want to hear and to me that's, that's right. just you know we have a first amendment for a reason and you can't just take things down because it doesn't agree with your fact checker it's that's just right so frustrating yeah it even, is frustrating. even on the texas patriots tea party on our page you know we get flagged deal with yeah. stuff and really oh all the time you know we have a really big page you know thousands of followers i believe are close to a thousand mm -hmm. um and you know so a lot of those are things that you know followers have posted onto our page um but yeah brenda's definitely right here it's it's it is insane how muted we really are because they don't want to hear what we have to say that's that's it exactly doesn't fit correct. the agenda now i don't know how, you know i know that there has been um other uh what they're, they're trying to start other sites, you know, that compete with Facebook and with Twitter as well. Um, I don't, you know, it's hard, right? It's very hard to move over because this, yes. And, and it, well, it's just hard for the people to move over, right? Cause you've got to, you know, it's just easy. We know these, these platforms. Um, that's the only thing I can think of is there's just going to be these really, truly start, you know, startups that say we are about free speech. We're not going to censor at all. You can do and say what you want, you know, which is really what it should be. We should be able to choose what we want to read and what we want to say, make up our own minds. And of course, then Ted Cruz, Senator Cruz, and it's very controversial. And frankly, I don't know enough about it. Having, I, I've not even delved into it one bit, but I know he's working very hard because there's a difference between a, being a platform and being a, I don't even know, Ben, I don't know if you know the, the word for it, but there's, I don't know. He goes, he's trying to do something about the social media platforms um, uh, censoring us so much. And he's, uh, because there is a difference uh, in the type of organization they are. In other words, a lot of people, you know, would say, hey, government, don't tell bi bis uh, this business what they can and cannot do, right? But apparently there's something about the type of platform they are that allows them to do this that allows the government to say you can't censor I, again i don't know but i know that senator cruz has been on this a lot for a long time whether that'll get, gain any uh, you know traction i don't know but they they hear it they know it you know they've experienced it and that's why they're working very hard on getting rid of the censorship i don't know i i like i said i you know i might even go wait a minute you know when i look at it i don't i don't really know where i am on that but Gosh, I'm with y'all. We got to do something. And that's really kind of taking it back to the Texan. It's kind of like, that's why I love it being subscription based, right? We don't have it. I'll tell you when we first launched people out of, you know, the left on Twitter came at me like crazy and they started going, you know, they hadn't read one article, of course, right? They hadn't read a thing. They don't know anything. And, um, and, you know, if they read it, they'd go, hey, this isn't, I mean, this is just news, right? <laughs> you know, they wouldn't be offended or wouldn't hate it. Um, but they came after me right away and they were saying, 
who are her advertisers? Who's advertising? Because they, that's what they wanted to do was take down our advertisers. And y'all have seen this, right? They've done it to, you know, so many companies that are right of center that they can, they, you know, say are hate groups or whatever, you know? And so it's really cool that we don't have, you know, funders that they can come after. We don't have advertisers that they have, uh, that they can come after. We just have subscribers, you know, and they don't even, you know, we're a privately held company, so they don't know who our subscribers are. And so it's a, it's, it's so awesome because that's the one, that's one of the things that my husband and I talked about a lot when we were launching, because we didn't want that. We didn't want that retribution to be able to take us down either. Um, and so, you know, the more businesses realize this, you know, and come out with a Facebook, you know, a competitor to Facebook and one to Twitter, you know, I, that's the way, only way I see it happening that we don't have to go through this garbage anymore, you know? Well, I think it's an awesome platform and it's honestly a breath, um, a breath of fresh air. I actually have your uh, website pulled up on my other screen and I will definitely be a subscriber because you know I was just actually telling Bob um, it might have been last week I said I'm just I'm to the point I don't even like watching the news I don't like opening exactly. up my Facebook I don't because I'm just so tired of my opinion always being wrong and like even what yeah. I believe is right you know I'm a list of all these terrible things because that's the way I believe and especially in my generation it's just you're yeah. ju you just you're overwhelmed and drowned with you know what you're supposed to think and if you don't that's fit right. in that then you're just a mess you're a name thing. you're a yeah. name you know exactly. you're a bigot or a racist or a misogynist or what are all the things you know exactly. that we get called and that's exactly we don't even have um comment section at the end of our articles because i was like no there's enough noise out there right comment on facebook comment on twitter but no i don't even want it on there so it's just nice and clean you read an article you know you know what's going on but you don't have to get you know ah and with all the other stuff so i appreciate that very much absolutely Great. Can we repost something from yes, yes, you can. And don't worry that it's a subscription based. Even if you don't subscribe, you'll get one free article per month. And you can post that. And, you know, we've got lots of subscribers, but trust me, there's, you know, 29 million Texans out there, right? So, so uh, you know, don't if you repost it, people will be able to open it because they probably haven't read their one free article that month. So, yeah. yes, the more you, you know, post it, the better it is for us, the more it gets out that, hey, there's an alternative. You know, there's somebody that we can trust. They're just giving us the news, you know? So, yeah. Manual, because I need a pint glass, <laughs> and I also drink coffee, so. <laughs> and I especially want to drink coffee at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we did it. We came out with the pint glass because it was our one year anniversary. And, and so we're having lots of fun doing stuff like that and going after this fake news media. So <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming on and, and for the breath of fresh air. I'm so excited you to bet. have an outlet oh. that I can just read the facts. No one's opinion. I just want the facts. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. And thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. You bet. <laughs> well, Paul. Well, you know, Maggie's unmuted. I don't know if she wants yes. to ask this question or not. Hi. Hi, girlfriend. I wanted to see, I would like for the Texan to do something on the Alamo. Yes. Um, so we've got, know, we, have a, we have a CEO of the Alamo that has today said that he is not going to uh, renew his contract in September. And he ha we have spent our tax dollars for four years on him, like $336,000 a year. And he is not, he's from Ohio. He's not for telling the history of the Alamo as the battle. He wants to tell the mission, you know, the. Right, the, yes. So yes. Years. And so we've wasted our tax dollars, but no one will cover this. Chris Salcedo has covered it recently. Dan Patrick's come out, Kyle Biederman, and Steve Toth. It's yes. the um, politicians are scared to touch it because of George P. Bush. Right. And right. I, the news outlets won't cover it. They keep it kind of with the lid on it down in San Antonio. But Chris Salcedo has, you know, good dev into it here. But I would like somebody to do something because today he's come out and said he's not seeking for his contract to be renewed in September. But they're digging up bodies and yeah. they not allow DNA. We know that the ones in the Alamo they're funding are our defenders because we have records of the United States Army just a few years after the battle 
re-interring bones into wooden caskets. He will, they will not do DNA because they're afraid it might put a stop on some of their reimagining mm. for money, mm. for dollars. Anyway, I would love to see an article yes. on that. I agree. Maggie, I have to apologize because I tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to my editor about that from the very, very beginning. Um, well, and Lee Spencer White would be the one because she's okay. the president of the Alamo Defenders Association. Uh huh. They are not even allowing, George P. will not allow them in for their yearly, uh, you know, memorial for the defenders in, to read their names and have prayer on the 6th of March. Now, um, the CEO will say they allow some of the DRT, but they have uh -huh. people that are on their board or whatever, but they're not allowing the actual defenders descendants in there to like they've done for like 20 years. Right, exactly. So I'm just, that's really, you know. I agree, I agree. Forget I'm our history. I went, I'm with you. I, I, we appreciate what you're doing, Connie. Yes, yes. I, but I, I know you do, but I know uh, we've got to write on it. And I, I promise you, Maggie, we're going to because we, <laughs> because I talk to my editor about it all the time. So we're, well, now we're would be there. a good time because yeah. there's something awry because Dan Patrick's been saying he wants to see more drawings because the drawings that he got last are just trees and benches. It looks like, um, you know, something's changing in, in New York City rather than the actual battlefield. That's not what they had given the tax dollars to do. Okay. Okay. We'll take a look into that. Okay. Thank, thank you, Maggie. you. You bet. Love you. Love you. All right. Anybody else? Zoom gave us extra time. We have a gift. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if nothing else, um, thank you all for being on the on on this. We're going to wrap up. We will post a recording of this uh, when we have it when we have it ready. Um, don't exactly what's happened for us in July. We are going to attempt to have a very big annual meeting. Um, hope to have something on that in the next couple of days that we can share. Um, but I don't. I love, I, I appreciate that you came on and did a virtual meeting with us, but this is not how we're supposed to function in our society. And, That's right. Uh, we, we really need to be, um, you know, I was having a, a talk with my pastor a couple weeks ago. I said, if there was ever a generation that could handle being locked down, it should be this one because of the technology. And we are suffering, uh, we have emotional suffering going out there uh, just That's from right. this because we are, we are social beings and we need... That's right. We need that interaction, but um, I am thankful we have technology so we can at least do this. Um, thank you again for your time, Senator Burton. You bet. Um, and I, I, I did, you know, I looked up, all right, can you call her Senator Burton even though she's no longer there? And the the uh, the etiquette is yes for oh, a senator. You don't need to. You don't need to. <laughs> Connie but is fine. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> uh, we do want to recognize your, your, uh, your service in the Senate here in mm -hmm. Texas, uh, we both, I think we both were down there at the same time. That we was were. your first, that was your first session. That was my first session down there. And it, it was, uh, pretty eye opening to just, yeah. uh, see what kind of chaos is going on down there. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly correct. Well, um, I just appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about the sure. Texan. Y'all are a great group. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much.